Welcome, I'm your host, Logan23. You're joining me for All the Wrong Reasons, Chapter 21. You have never been more sure of anything in your life. You both got on the plane, and Justin whisked you away to a hotel in Florence. The hotel has more than a more like a private home with its elegant townhouse facade, neoclassical furniture, and centuries worth of art collections in a four-story structure. You're greeted warmly by all the staff dressed in expensive suits and uniforms. Why are they treating us like VIPs? I rented the whole place for the whole week, so we are their only guests. But Justin, that's too much. What's the point of eloping if we can't have some sort of privacy, right? Justin, that is ridiculous. This is a big city, honey. I'm sure that we have, we could have privacy with other people here. Yes, but then I wouldn't be able to make love to you in every room if there were other people here. Oh, we're gonna go <laughs> room 320, now making love. You've got me there. A couple approaches, and Justin smiles widely at the man. It's Justin's cousin Mason and his wife Abigail. Justin, my man, it's so good to see you. It's good to see you too, Mason. I'd like you to meet my fiancé, Adrian. Mason shakes her hand and guides his wife forward. Nice to meet you. To finally meet the who woman who straightened my big cousin out, and this is the woman who straightened me out, Abby, my wife. How many more cousins are you still hiding from me? He's the last one, I promise. Mason, are we all set? Three more days, cuz. Your last minute requests are going to be the death of me. Please do everything you can. I don't want anybody to come and put a stop to this whole thing, you know? I'm not sure what's going on, but it's okay. What's going on here? What are you talking about? Our elopement, my love. Can you be more specific? Mason is handling the details, like the location, the license, and whatnot. Mason, do you need any help with this? I've got time on my hands. Actually, no you don't. Adrian, you and I are on flowers, cake, and dress. Oh, okay, cool. Well, here are twenty rooms here, and so you can pick whichever you want. Well, according to him, he says he's going to make love to her in every room, so... Twenty rooms? You bought out twenty rooms. Just because we're eloping doesn't mean I'm going to make it rushed. Less romantic experience for you, honey. Now, come on, let's pick out a room. Ride the elevator up to the top floor, where here are the only two suites. Justin shows you around two of them, and then asks which you prefer. Honey, when are we getting married? Three days. I'll take this room, and you can take the one across the hall. What? I said I'll take this one, and you can take the other one. You can hear Mason snickering by, and even Abby is shushing him. Why? Because we're not yet married. Surely we couldn't share a bedroom until then. Are you joking? Hmm. <laughs> if only you had rented one room. Oh, this will tell. This will teach him. Honey, you rented twenty rooms. It would be a huge waste if we didn't maximize on our investment. Sweetheart, this isn't funny. I'm serious. And I am too. If only you just rented the one room, then we wouldn't have a choice but to share. Well, there are twenty. I can't believe this is happening. I've walked into a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you, sir, just got owned. <coughs> You're going to have me for the rest of your life. You only have to wait three days. It's been three weeks. Besides, we practically lived together before. I don't understand what is happening here. Mason has moved on to full-blown laughter. <laughs> so have I. <laughs> <laughs> Justin is glaring at him with murder in his eyes. Can you give us a moment, please? He waits until Mason and Abby have left the room and then turns to you. You can tell that he's frustrated. You are killing me. All I've wanted to do since I saw you in that garden was throw you down and make love to you. Do you really love me? Or are you 
or are you just after the sex? Because if that's the case, then let's not get married. Let's just stay in bed all day for a week and then go back home. He pulls you to him in a sudden move that startles you. He wraps his arms around your waist and shakes his head in resignation. You little minx, you know I love you and you're not getting out of Italy until you become Adrian Adams. He kisses you passionately, his tongue teasing yours. You're breathless and a little unsure if you've made the right decision about abstinence, and then he pulls away. I've lasted three weeks. I can last three more days. But know this, you're going to be begging for it when I'm done with you. You grip the couch a little disoriented. He thinks this is hard, he thinks this is hard for him. You want to rip his clothes off right now. <clears throat> three days. Do we have a deal? The only thing we can't do is consummate the marriage. Yep. Okay, then. <sighs> we have a deal. But are you sure you want to forgo this whole three whole days? There's his fingertips over your ribs, brushing the underside of your breast as he leans down and kisses you behind the ear. Ah... Uh, you want him so badly, you can't rem even remember your name, much less remember why you decided to forego sex. You're saved by a knocking on the door. You're putting us both through hell, you little sadist. It's tradition. At night, you have dinner with Abby and Mason in one of the hotel restaurants. You discuss the arrangements for the wedding. You find that it's more elaborate than you'd expected. You'd expected a small, intimate affair. It sounds like this is going to be a big deal. <clears throat> what should I do? Just go with it. He planned most of it, so... Well, I guess I'm gonna get... I'm going to ever get married once. I Thank you, sweetheart, for trying to make this special for me. It's going to be small in terms of guests, but I want you to have a wedding of your dreams, Adrian. A perfect dress, perfect flowers. You smile and nod. You're too choked up at the, his thoughtfulness to respond. You wish you could only have a few of your loved ones with you, but the sacrifice is worth it. I love you. I love you so much. We are going to the dress shop tomorrow. We'll need to try on the s some of the dresses, choose one, and finalize the details so it will be ready in time for the big day. Okay, anything else we need to do? I'm getting a little nervous. I'm sure these two have it covered. They've been working on it for weeks. Weeks? Yeah. I asked them to make preparations while I was arranging for my fiancé to hate me. What happened with that, anyway? Like, how would you successfully get out of it sooner than you planned? I didn't. Dude, your parents are going to kill you. Don't get me wrong, I love this whole rebellion thing you've got going on, but I worry that Uncle Jack is going to kill you, like, for, for real. Oh, he's going to be pissed for a while, but then I'm 100% sure that he's going to forgive me. He loves you. I wish my parents were as forgiving. <laughs> you can't get what you don't ask for, Maze. <laughs> anyway, are you sure they'll, they'll accept you guys? No offense to you, Adrian. Well, Mason... Long story short... Is that Justin and I have been engaged to be married since we were infants. Wait, what? Yeah, Adrian is the girl who I was supposed to marry. Talk about crazy destiny! Funny you should say that, Mason. I totally believe in destiny. But Justin had no faith. <laughs> Leaving your fate up to chance is counterproductive. I would rather have taken matters into my own hands. I agree. Oh, like trying to make your fiancé miserable so she rejects you? Justin grumbles with a rueful smile, and Mason and Abigail stare at you two in shock as the realization dawns. You're Andrea Blank? Do your parents know? Not yet. We are punishing them just a little. So, why are you eloping? Everybody at home will be delighted to be in your wedding. I don't want to give our parents the satisfaction that they were right to meddle with our lives. I just want them to know that they can do this to us, even if I like how it all ended. This is one hell of a love story. Let's make this wedding as magical as possible. That is my goal. 
You said that you were trying to make her miserable. What did you do, Justin? Oh. I should see how he presents the details. Cut in and tell my side of the story. Allow me to fill you in, Jordan. It was horrible. He was rude to me and any waitstaff he met. He tried to pick up other women in front of me. And worse, he told me that I didn't meet his expectations of rich socialite Harris, and I begged my mother to call everything off. You laugh now, but you are remember being utterly disgusted having to deal with Justin J. If it makes you feel any better, he really did like you. Oddly, it does not. Wow! Jordan is usually so nice. He wasn't in my case. I look forward to getting to know the real him. The next day, you are shocked to see that the sweet and quiet Abigail is actually a force to be reckoned with. She's arranged a photographer, videographer, catering, and the cake. She spent the morning bullying them into deadlines and submission before turning her laser focus on you. You realize that it's afternoon and you've been going nonstop. I'm not gonna lie to you, you're a little scary, Abby. No wonder everything is on schedule, but I thought we were going to go look for addresses. Justin called me and yelled at me for starving you. We're going to a quick lunch with the boys and then go get your dress. You nod and quietly thank Justin for rescuing you. This woman is a taskmaster. Where is Justin? Over here, at the table. We'll be having lunch with him and Mason. Smile, Adrian. You're going to like this. You turn around and your throat lodges and your your heart lodges in your throat. You immediately burst into happy tears. Oh my god. Hmm. You don't think we'd let you get married without us, do you? As if. You gather them into a giant hug. How did you get here? Your boyfriend. I mean, your fiancé. He called us last night and told us to get on the next flight to Italy, no matter the cost. I cannot believe you guys have eloped. This is a gorgeous ring. Heirloom? Justin? That ring originally belonged to my grandmother. She gave it to my father when he proposed to my mom. And my mom gave it to me when she wanted me to propose to my betrothed and the one she arranged for me. You guys are so dead. I tell my friends what had happened, starting with... I'm the brat he was engaged to. As it turns out, I was the brat that he's engaged to all his life. No! Yes, we found out the other day. That this is a tragic comedy. Shakespeare has nothing on Adrian and Justin. But it all turned out okay in the end. How pissed off are your parents at you? Very. Yeah, pretty much that. When I saw you in blush, you were looking rather happy. Because I planned to scare off my designated fiancé and it was working. I had no idea she was Adrian. It's surreal, really. Like, what are the chances, right? Like, one in a million. You guys are really lucky. You spend the next hour catching up and chatting, but then Abigail reminds you that you still need a dress. You, Jill, Jan, and Abigail pile into a cab and are whisked away to a shop. So, the owner has closed the shop this afternoon so that you can shop without interruption. Oh, love of my life. I would love to do that. Go into a store and it's all yours. Like, could you imagine? Oh, I hate going into stores. And just the people, and the obnoxiousness, and the passing in front of you. Remember, like, maybe it was before some of you that are watching time, but you know, I used to stand in a store, and people would pass in front of you, and they would say, excuse me. I can literally, in the last five years, count on one hand how many people have said that to me. I typically will always say it to everybody. It's just manners, I guess. So, the owner is closed. Okay, we did that one. I don't know if that's necessary, Abby. I, I don't want to put her out or make her lose business. You turn to your friends and they give, a, give them a wide-eyed, help me look. Well, I think she's got the right idea. Besides, you're running out of time. A woman who runs with an iron fist is exactly what you need to get everything right in uh, two days. You pick out a simple dress, and Abigail immediately shoots it down. That is a cocktail dress, Adrian. Seriously? This isn't good enough for a four-guest wedding? Seriously, Adrian. Justin is Madison's go-to guy. 
if there's one thing I, I'm i good at, it's reading people. Justin feels guilty. He wants you to have a wedding that is fit for a princess, and he knows you deserve a fairy tale wedding, but instead you're eloping. So, if you let him do this grand style he thinks you deserve, it would help alleviate his guilt for stealing you away. <clears throat> Do I give up control and let Abby plan my fairy tale wedding? No, it's my wedding! Abigail, I know what you mean. Well, I, I, I know that Justin wants to do the best for me, but this is also an extravagant, and I'm not that kind of girl. Adrian Miller, you listen to me. You deserve happiness, and you've had a little of it. And you've had too little of it in your life. You deserve nice things. You don't have to scrimp and save every penny anymore in some crazy effort to please a monster of a mom. You're not going to pick out a dream dress. Then you're going to have a beautiful wedding with the man of your dreams. Calm the fuck down. <laughs> what he said. Now, let's pick out an effing amazing dress. <laughs> you look at your friends in shock, then try to get you to indulge more than you'd like to. But you never expected them to be so venomous about it. Okay, I guess you're right. See, guys? The illusion of choices. Okay? Illusion of diamonds, illusion of choices. See? This is how it's supposed to be. <clears throat> we are. And you have to let go of these hang-ups. You deserve the best, Adrian. So start dealing with it. Can we cut your hair for starters? That'd be great. <laughs> His hair does kind of bother me a little. Just a little. You put on the black dress back and grab the one that Abigail was holding and go into the fitting room. When you finally come out, your friends gasp and all. Wow! That dress is... 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 That is a dress, if you ask me. For a minute there, it took me a minute. We don't get to see it! Really? Oh, piss off. I agree. I've never worn something that makes me feel so beautiful and special. See? This is perfection. How could you get it so right on the, the first try? Talent, my dear. Now, let's get your shoes and lingerie. Mm. You finish up your shopping and head back to the hotel for dinner, drinks, and more. You find yourself yawning early, so Justin brings you up to the room to get some rest. I guess we won't see the dress until the wedding day, I guess. Hmm. You didn't have to carry me up to the room, you know. Hey, I have to practice for a wedding night, and I don't want to drop you. It's a really big gown. I think you're going to have difficulty anyway. How big are we talking? Cinderella big? I can't wait to see it in it. And more importantly, I can't wait to see you out of it. Why is that a frown? Why did he get? Why does he get a frown? I mean, I'd give this devilish little grin like, <laughs> You laugh and playfully push him away. You have less than 48 hours to go. I know you can do it. Uh, I don't think I can. 48 hours is torture. Do I want to fool around a little? <sighs> oh, no, I'm going to wait. You can wait, I promise. He grabs you and kisses you senselessly. You are ready to beg him for more when he stops. What are you doing? Why did you stop? Now, don't you wish you hadn't made these damn rules? Oh, I can't believe you right now. Told you that you'd be begging me for a... I did not beg. Sounds like begging to me, honey. Get off of me, you conceited ass. <laughs> Really? You're not going to change your mind after that? Nope. Hmm. Well, then you better be ready on our wedding night. You're not getting any sleep. Honey, you need to get off. Honey, I'm trying to get off. No, I'm going to... Oh, shit. How long's it been? It's been about 20-ish days. Oh, crap. Remember the night that he was not wearing protection and she did, wasn't on birth control? <gasps> you roll off the bed and run to the bathroom where you lose everything you've eaten all day. Justin follows you and holds your hair back as your body is racked with convulsions. After you brush your teeth, you notice that he's smiling at you. Honey, 
Why are you smiling so smugly at me? I'm just very happy, honey. I think that uh, my backup plan just came through. It takes you a few minutes to understand what he's saying, but then you realize that you've been exhausted and emotional for the last few days. I just... I just thought it was the stress. Oh my god, I'm pregnant. Justin, did you plan this? Why, yes! Yes, he did! That was his backup plan. Remember what he said to his dad? If she's pregnant, I'm standing by her, and even you won't stop that, and you know you won't. So his backup plan would have worked. So regardless, if his fiance would have fell for his ugly, just ugh, ass, like that guy, that Justin J, he had the backup plan. Hmm. Very smart, sir. Very smart. I nod to you, and I totally forgot about that. With that being said, I hope you all did enjoy the video. We got one more chapter left. I believe it's the finale, but we'll have to see. Uh, tune in for that. Tune in for chapter 22. Um, feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe. Head down to the description below. We do have a Discord server where you can come and chat with me and other members of the YouTube community. As well as um, there's some links to social media and some links to support me and my channel. It's greatly appreciated. Please do so. If you're not able to, please do hit that like and share button. Until next time, stay well, stay awesome, and thanks for watching. Peace.